Hi everybody, Joe here from Shutter Speak Photography. So, nice to see your smiling faces again here on YouTube. Um, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the new Nick Collection 3.0 that's out from DxO Marks. You can upgrade at a special introductory price currently. Uh, if you have 2.5, probably 2.0. Um, or of course you could purchase the full package. But we're going to take a quick look at what's new and you can decide for yourselves if this is an upgrade that's worth it for you. Um, I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of people on the web that think since DxO Marks has taken over, um, some of the moves they've made have been what some people would call money grabs, uh, especially with very small feature upgrades like the 2.0, the 2.5, that really didn't have a tremendous amount, really no major changes to any of the tools. But 3.0 does introduce a new tool. So that's something new that you might want to consider and we'll take a look at it, as well as a new launcher and a brush feature that's been integrated into their tool set as well. So we'll take a look at it and you can make a decision as to whether or not it's right for you. So. Um, before we get started, I'd just like to run one more thing by your smiling faces. If you find something helpful in this video, please help me by hitting the subscribe button. Okay, so we are here inside Photoshop and we have this image up on the screen that we're going to quickly fix up and then we are going to apply some of the DxO filters to it. So let us get started. So one of the first things I want to do is just we're just going to clean up some of the distractors in this image really quick. It is a smart object and the tool that I have chosen doesn't like that. Uh, so what we're going to do is hit Control J. We're going to copy that layer and right click on it and we're going to uh, rasterize this layer. Okay, I'm going to make some changes really quick here. and. Just get rid of this shadow down here. That's a bit of a distractor. And let Photoshop work its magic. That's fine. And maybe we'll get rid of these people in the background. Let's fit this to screen. And let's get rid of a few of these distractors back here. Photoshop cleans this up really quickly with the healing tool right here. Okay. And that's good. Just do this a little bit at a time so that Photoshop doesn't make a mess out of things. By just doing it a little at a time, it, it's able to work its magic a little bit better and make some better decisions. Now you see things are getting a little messy in the background there, and that's fine. It's not going to matter. Uh, I'm going to show you why in a little bit, so let's not worry so much about that. Okay, so, uh, maybe we'll fix that up a little bit. There we go. So one of the first things that I want to show you about the new tool here in DxO, and uh, I'm gonna fix those fishing poles too, there we go, okay, is that it has a new launcher. They now call it the Nick Collection Selective Tool, and it has some presets in some of the tools, like for example, Color Effects 4, you'll see the arrow and I can apply any favorite recipes or last edits right there from that panel. Uh, it kind of has the look and feel a little bit more Photoshop. Matching the color scheme a little bit better. Uh, we can uh, make it a little bit smaller, but sadly we still cannot dock it and it still kind of puts itself in the way every time it launches and um, it is easy to shut off there is a settings tab right here and you can just uncheck this automatically launch uh, checkbox here but I'm not going to do that right now you can also minimize it and it will hide itself down at the bottom I find it a little bit hard to relaunch because when you double click on it it opens up this little about box unless you hit it just right on that little uh, maximize icon. Um, 
So let's open this back up again. And the tool that is new is the new perspective effects. And I'll give DxO Marks uh, a lot of uh, props for doing a great job. What they did was they took their collection, their lens database, and their camera database, and they made custom profiles for all the various lenses um, in combinations with various cameras. And you can now apply uh, perspective correction based on not only the lens, but the exact camera with the exact lens that you're using. You do have to download a small module um, for each situation. So for example, if I was shooting a Nikon Z6 with a Nikon Z 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens, there is no profile for that in Adobe Lightroom. However, in perspective effects, there is a profile and it will prompt me to download it. I can download it um, within the plugin and get right back to it. It is a little um, picky though. So I can't apply this profile because it needs the original image. Now this is the original image, but I opened it as a smart object in Photoshop and it doesn't like that. Uh, and now let me just show you how I can show you exactly how this actually would work. Let me make sure I don't have uh, correction on. I do not have correction on. So now if I take this image and I say edit in Photoshop, and I'm not opening it as a smart object. Let me run perspective effects. Um, there we go. And now I can hit the auto. It recognizes this is a Nikon Z6. It recognizes it was shot with a Nikon Z 24-70 f2.8 lens on that Z6 body and it has applied the appropriate corrections for it. But same exact image as a smart object, it can't do it. Um, if I save this back, I can't save it back as the raw image. Unfortunately, I would have to save it back as a PSD or a TIFF uh, to get that those changes recognized by Lightroom. Same thing if I launch this from Lightroom. You're going to have to save a second copy of this. But again, you know, it, it's a great tool and uh, it has a tremendous amount of information out there. So in that respect, I like it and, and I'm pretty happy about it. Right, let's don't save. Okay, let's close this out and get back to our original that we were working on. Um, I've gone ahead and made a copy of the layer and you see that right there. And I want to see, show you some of the other things that perspective effects can do, which is actually, uh, in my opinion, uh, also uh, really worthwhile mentioning. So down at the bottom here, it has the miniature effect, and we can just turn that on. And what it's designed to do is give a toy effect uh, to a cityscape or, or something like that. I'm sure you've seen a miniature effect. And uh, you know, I can show you a quick example of that. Let's go back to the library really quick and I will show you a quick version of that. So we take this photo here. Let's go over to Photoshop. Oops, let's cancel that. Let's take the original. If I can find the original, there it is. Let's edit this in Photoshop and we'll apply that miniature effect so you get an idea of what that looks like. Okay, let's cancel out of this. And here we go. So again, we'll go with perspective effects. And using perspective effects, let's go down to that miniature effect. And you'll see how that works, giving that, that uh, toy effect, like we're, we're photographing a miniature object. Okay, you can also take this and change where the blur is affecting your image and change the size as well, as well as the angle. So if we wanted to drag this up or down, okay, we could do that. Okay, and once we're happy, we could just hit apply. So. That's pretty fun. I like that. And I'm going to bounce back to one of the other ways that I thought the perspective effects was kind of fun. Now, also, when 
working with portraits, especially portraits with children, a uh, popular look is to take this, ooh, what happened here? Let's back out of this for a second. And let's try that again. Perspective. Okay, here we are. And we're gonna turn that miniature effect on. So a popular look is to blur out the foreground and the background so that the focus is solely on the child. Okay, so we can go ahead and apply that right there and it actually does a pretty decent job. Okay, again, we have the ability to change the amount of blur by just hitting this slider here and the same for the top. The only thing that I would have preferred is if these sliders operated independently meaning that I could apply more blur in this direction and less blur in this direction if I had chose to do that. Unfortunately, it's the same on both sides. So if I choose 23 here, it's going to be 23 above. So everything above has a blur factor of 23. Everything below this line, a blur factor of 23. But once I'm happy with it, I can go ahead and apply that blur. I think I'd like to move it down a little bit. Um, maybe make the distance a little bit wider. Let's go ahead and get that at zero degrees. And once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and save it. And now this is, I'm going to give it a little more breathing room, something that I am pretty happy with. And, you know, could we have done this in Photoshop? Yeah, of course we could have. Um, but it is just a nice convenient uh, tool to have and it does work well. Okay, so again, if I'm happy with that, I can just hit apply and hit save, and that will bring us right back into Photoshop with that blur now applied. Now, let's say now we wanted to maybe apply some colorization to this. Uh, maybe I would have done that in Photoshop, but if we wanted to use Color Effects 4, we can certainly do that. You see it drops itself onto a new layer, which is nice. Now, opening up Color Effects 4, I don't see anything new about this. Um, again, they did add a new tool, but your existing tool set seems to be the same. If there are any new presets or anything in here, I haven't found them. The uh, 2.5 version had 200 presets. They're advertising 200 presets for uh, this color, uh, Nick Collection 3.0. So as far as I'm concerned and, and as best I can tell, I don't see any other changes. I looked on the Nick Collection website and they don't have any information that I was able to find that defines what the changes are from 3, from 2.5 to 3 for the Nick Collection with the exception of the new tool and the new feature that I'm about to show you. So, if I wanted to add some color to this, I would add a filter and let's go with, let's see, uh, colorize. Okay, and I'm going to choose my color that I want to colorize, probably a pink, and that looks nice. And I'm going to apply that. And that's actually not bad maybe a little bit less okay and so once I'm happy with what I have down at the bottom now we now have a brush tool okay so if we clicked on brush uh, color effects 4 is going to go back and now we have this brush tool that pops up and now what we do here is we basically have the ability to brush in this effect wherever we want it Okay, essentially, really, listen, all it's done is created a layer mask. Uh, but is it handy and convenient? Sure, it is. So if I didn't want it to affect the sky, I only wanted it to affect the, the bottom of the image, I could easily do that by now just brushing it in. I could erase out parts that I didn't want. If I made a mistake, I can brush those parts back in. Uh, here I can affect the entire image or not or I could delete it altogether. So again, let's just, for an example, let's brush this out of the sky. Because we want in the blue sky. 
maybe and we only want to colorize this bottom half of the image and again you see it's basically it's just created a mask for us here but we hit apply and it's done it's handy it's convenient um, you know we'll crop out this image a little bit and even out that horizon line okay there we go and drag that out a little bit and crop that into place there we go and quick and easy we've created that blurred effect you know, we've colorized our image we've masked it into the parts that we want in a um, somewhat non-destructive manner um, is the perspective tool enough for the cost of the upgrade well that's going to be for you to decide right now you can get the upgrade at a discount um, for uh, a limited time and, and then after that the, the price is going to go up um, however in terms of the remainder of the tool set most things seem to be unchanged uh, some of the things that I wasn't particularly thrilled about is uh, the interface that is uh, somewhat difficult on some of the tools uh, I am using a 4k monitor this tool the font size is decent but on some of the other tools the font size again this is just unacceptable I mean I can barely read the font size here uh, to me you have to do better um, you know this is just you know it's just not okay to work with with a tool that just clearly wasn't designed to work with a 4k monitor so is there progress? Yes. Is there room for improvement? Yeah, there sure is. So, uh, again, is it worth it? Well, that's for you to decide. So, there you have it. So, I hope you found that video helpful. And if you did, please do me a favor and help me out by hitting like and hitting the subscribe button. And also ring the bell so you get notified of future updates, um, usually about two videos or so a week. I would certainly appreciate it. Again, if something in this video helped you, please do that to help me. I greatly appreciate it. Um, feel free to comment. I do answer almost all of the comments if I can. So if you have a question, feel free to drop it in there. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Okay? Have a great one. Bye.